Good afternoon, everyone. It's a joy to be here to introduce this conversation on women in Jesuit education. I'm Kristen Ross Kelly, and I currently serve as Director of Research Development and Global Initiatives with the Jesuit Schools Network. This is my 20th year in Jesuit education, and prior to the JSN, I was Principal of Loyola School in New York City and Assistant Principal of Regis High School, also in New York before that, and a counselor and a teacher before that. I have been studying and learning about and researching women in our schools for over eight years now. And my only disappointment today as we open this conversation on such an important stage at the colloquium is that I cannot be there in person as I had intended since we first started planning this panel conversation over a year ago. I just had a baby girl about two weeks ago. She came a bit early and I'm now on maternity leave which is actually a fitting place to be as I introduce what I hope is a great conversation on the meaningful contribution and experiences of women in our schools. I think it's fair to say that we have not spent enough time thinking about the important dimension of gender in our schools. There is great irony in this, of course, as so many of our schools are single sex and are therefore shaped around gender itself. I hope we can think of this conversation this afternoon as a consciousness raising, where we seek to explicitly expand conversation and connection in areas where we have been largely quiet and isolated. As we all know, there is great power that can come when we put voice to areas where we have been silent. Diversity in all of its forms is a critical aspect of leadership. We learn from and with one another by connecting on similarities and being informed by differences. In engaging together in an inquiry on gender, we are creating space for our collective learning around a topic that is at the heart of our shared mission, nurturing and building inclusive communities. With a lens of thoughtful discernment, I am excited to see not just where our conversation takes us this afternoon, but also beyond. My own research on exploring the experiences of women working in all boys Jesuit schools began years ago as a personal curiosity and desire to reflect on my own experience as a female leader in our schools. It occurred to me that in all my years as a faculty member, I never really had an explicit conversation about how being a woman may influence my work with students, boys in my case. For whatever reason, gender was a seldom discussed aspect of our community, and I sought to change that. In recent years, I've had the pleasure of sharing the learning I cultivated with so many of our schools, and this year's national spotlight on the culture of gender in our country has brought about a new lens on this work. As our attention turned to the Me Too movement, the Kavanaugh hearings, and record numbers of women leaders in Congress, conversations exploded across our schools in ways that brought the topic of gender to the forefront of the minds of our students and faculties. This is no longer something that was on the minds of a few of us. And being able to talk about gender in real and meaningful ways with our students and our colleagues became more important than ever. When it comes to sharing stories of the experiences of being a woman in Jesuit education, I have always been inspired by St. Ignatius's focus on the experience. Isn't that what we are always interested in? The experience of our students? As educators, we think a lot about, for example, the experience of a student of color in a school where she may not see many peers that look like her. The experience of a student who hails from a lower socioeconomic background in a school where most others do not. The experience of a student who is struggling with issues of sexuality. What is his experience like in our halls? So, what is the experience of being a woman in Jesuit education? This is not a simple question to answer, but I hope this afternoon we will be successful at peeling back the many layers of this complex experience. As I think about caring for our students, I firmly believe it is our responsibility as Ignatian leaders to have an awareness around the education we provide young men and young women around gender. This sends an important message that our schools care about this within the umbrella of the education that we provide. I believe our call as Jesuit educators in this Me Too era is that this conversation is bigger than us. It is about our mission we launch students to universities that are awash in this conversation. 
and then our students may go on to the corporate world, like Google and Uber, for example, that are as well. Our job is to make sure that our students are informed about gender education, that their consciousness is raised on gender, that they understand and feel at ease with things like consent, unconscious bias, how to reject sexism, and see all of this as an issue of justice. They know that we know that this conversation is messy and complicated, but we're not afraid of it and we are able to enter into it without fear. As with everything we do, we cannot shy away from what may be hard conversations. That silence sends a message too. Conversations like we are having right now are so important. I propose that Jesuit educators ought to be leaders in this conversation on building gender awareness in our schools and among our students. Given our mission, our focus on relationships, on seeing God in all things, on valuing the person sitting in front of us, on being bridges in the context of hope and mission, it ought to be something we do so well that we are proud of it, that it is a hallmark of Jesuit education. Now, it's important to have a sense of the current reality of our schools on gender. And I offer here some data that will add context to this conversation. When we think about student gender of our schools, we have 82 schools in the JSN, 12 are Crystal Ray, 17 are nativity schools, and 53 are traditional schools. Of the 82 schools, 55 are all boys and 27 are co-ed. Of the 53 traditional schools, 36 are all boys and 17 are co-ed. When we think about faculty and staff gender in our schools, and this data is plucked from the JSN annual report, which is available to everyone on our website, across the five provinces, including all our schools that make up the JSN, laymen and Jesuits make up a range of faculty and staff on average from the high end 61% to the low end 51%. Lay women make up a range of faculty and staff on average from the high 48% to the low 39%. Now I would note that these reported numbers can be challenging to gauge considering the varying roles in our schools, who is considered staff or support staff, for example, or teaching faculty at various institutions. It's also important to capture a glimpse of gender at the top positions of leadership in our schools. Of all of our schools across the network, we have eight women serving as president. Four are in high schools, one of those is a Cristo Rey school, two are in our traditional all boys schools, and one is a traditional co-ed, and four presidents are in nativity schools. We have 24 women serving as principal, 19 are in high schools, five are Cristo Rey, 14 of these are in traditional schools, and of those 14, three are female principals of all boys schools, five are nativity schools, and one religious woman is in that role. So those numbers give us a lot to think about. From this data, we can understand that on average, most of our schools have a solid balance of women in the middle at the faculty and staff level, but we are certainly thinner at the top layers of leadership. The history of Jesuit schools can account for some of this gap in leadership, remembering that for much of their histories, Jesuit schools were staffed mostly by Jesuit priests and brothers, with the first women not starting to work in many of our schools until the late 60s and early 70s. So we've come a long way, but I'm sure that we can all agree that we have a long way to go. As we move into hearing the thoughts and insights of our esteemed panel, it's important to know that we do not have a deficit entry into this conversation. The idea of contributions and experiences of blessings and challenges is important to keep at the front of our minds. It's also crucial to know that this conversation is not just about boys' schools. Gender is just as relevant a focus at co-ed schools, and we all spend our days in what has historically been a predominantly male network. I'm so grateful to the seven members of our panel for saying yes to being a part of this discussion and to Tara Caputa for facilitating their conversation. In addition to her role at St. Ignatius in Cleveland, Tara is also an adjunct in our seminars in Ignatian Leadership Program and her own doctoral research and work in higher education was focused on gender studies. So she is a terrific person to moderate this conversation this afternoon. I asked this panel just about a year ago before any of the national conversations had taken a hold of our media headlines. The big idea is not that we are gender experts, 
but that we are leaders from various backgrounds who reflect with our head and our heart on personal experiences as we wrestle with these often complex issues. All of us in this auditorium ought to be doing this on important issues like gender and race and socioeconomic status. We surely won't get to everything in the time that we have, but I hope that starting this conversation on this stage will prompt a lot of conversation going forward. I've always considered my work in Jesuit education to be among the greatest blessings of my life. In my roles in schools, I was tuned into the experiences and challenges faced by the women in my setting, and I wondered informally how their experience aligned or differed from my own transition into our community. I hope today's conversation will continue my quest to shine a light on our unique experience of being a woman in Jesuit education. Thank you.